Good morning, Falcons. I'm Ethan Lockard. And I'm Grayson Jones, and this is the Falcon Report. The spring senior class meeting is on Friday during first hour and advisory. Check in with your first hour teacher, then head to the auditorium. Important information for all seniors will be shared, as well as plans for graduation and upcoming events. This is required for all seniors. Also, on Friday, the first round of cap and gown delivery will happen from 1030 to 1230 outside the Falcon Gym. The Hanford Spring Fling Bazaar is this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can enter the bazaar through the south entrance, north entrance, or the commons. Support Hanford Pro Podcast and Video Production Club while shopping over 100 local vendors. Here's Mr. Seitz with an important message and amazing opportunity. Hey Hanford, it's Mr. Seitz in the Career Center. I've got some good news for those of you looking for jobs. Uh, we've got several district internship positions for next school year. Uh, one of those being our IT department. They hire multiple positions. Uh, if you have any connecting class related to computers, cybersecurity, things like that, uh, you could potentially be eligible. So if you're interested in that, uh, a lot of time is spent uh, repairing Chromebooks, but also if you are um, at all interested in learning some of the networking and other things involved in IT, we have that as well. So you can work over the summer or strictly during the school year, and we'd work with your counselor to have your schedule adjusted to kind of work a little bit during the school day. Uh, in addition to IT, we've also got a, uh, a RSD social media channel for our Richland School District CTE department and that person gets paid to run the social media channel, take pictures, post things on Instagram, things like that. Um, photography, graphic design, some of those um, connecting classes. Again, you must be an incoming junior or an incoming senior. So this year's senior, sorry you're not eligible, uh, but you have to be meeting those eligibility criteria as well as having a connecting class and you need to email me a cover letter and a resume and I will pass those on to the appropriate departments. Have a great day. If you are interested in the appointed positions on the Executive Council, stop by Mr. Mayor's room, 1203, for more information, and plan to attend the meeting on Thursday after school. The Pasco invite took place this weekend, and Hanford Track and Field had a good showing. The boys were led by Grayson Jones, who brought home sixth in the 300-meter hurdles. The girls placed eighth overall, with Lonea Moran placing seventh in the 100-meter hurdles. Mia Bechtel earned eighth in the 1600-meter run, and Caitlin Wolfert took third in pole vault. Landry Allen placed third in high jump and was the pole vault champion. Landry's vault of 13 feet, 4 inches, breaks her own school record for the fourth time this season. She is currently first in the state and ninth nationwide. Congratulations, track and field. If you want to see them in action in person, they compete today at home at 3 p.m. Here's a message from Recycling Club about how you can do your part. This message is sponsored by the HHS Recycling Club. Is this aluminum can recyclable? Um, I don't know. I usually just throw it away. I never really thought about it before. Here's the rules of recycling. Items you can and should be recycling include plastic water bottles, soda cans, paper, cardboard, or anything that has the recycling logo on it. Items that can't be recycled include containers with food left in them, bottles with liquid left in them, used tissues, chip bags, and granola bar wrappers. This paper showing what's recyclable and what's not will be taped to every recycling can in teachers' classrooms, so if you ever forget these rules, make sure to check the paper. The Ecology Club plant sale continues today through Friday after school in the greenhouse. If you haven't already heard, last month Hanford Boys Soccer beat Richland for the first time in seven years. Lee Rangel and Kate Armstrong documented this accomplishment in a short film called Rivalry. It will play at the end of the report. We know that all teachers won't have time to show the whole four minute film. If your teacher has to stop it before it's over, please hop onto our YouTube page in your free time and check it out. Activities meeting today are FAST in 2602 for all subjects and 2208 for ASL, Art Club in 1312, ASL Club in 2208, Culinary Club in 2501, DECA in 1202, Ecology Club in 2613, German Club in 2603, Knowledge Bowl in 2204, and Dungeons and Dragons in the Library. That's all, to, that's all for today. I'm Grayson Jones. And I'm Ethan Lockard, and this has been The Falcon Report. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When talking about rivalries in the Tri-Cities, it doesn't get much bigger than better than the Richland Bombers and the Hanford Falcons. Hanford Falcons and the Richland Bombers. And it's the Richland Bombers taking home the victory yet again. Hanford 1. Richland 2. Hanford 0. Richland 3. It's been seven years since they won. Hanford's chances aren't looking good. Everyone is excited for the city of Richland's biggest rivalry.
I'm Aaron Lowry, senior, the goalkeeper. Liam Henderson, junior defender. My name's Cole Kite. I'm a junior and I play forward. Gustavo Gonzalez and I'm head coach for uh, Hanford Soccer. Before the game, we felt we felt really good. We felt really confident. Uh, it wasn't a this season type of thing. It was these last two years type of thing that we've been trying to build up and uh, get confidence as, as we go. The rivalry for Richland, since I've gotten here, we've kind of been on the losing end of it. Kind of like we showed up or like on the next game, like we know we're going to lose this one. We came into this game like we were ready, like this is our year to beat them and we proved them wrong. When the game came, we knew this was our shot in the sense that, yeah, it's been seven years, but every game we've been getting closer and closer. The players seem more determined than ever before. You can feel the energy from the stands. We were creating chances and we were playing well. We just went down early off a, an unlucky play. They knew they were playing well, we knew they were playing well. Obviously, PKs are really stressful. I mean, I knew we were gonna, I knew we were gonna put our PKs away, so I just, I just had to get one. They missed their first one. placed me at five and uh, well it was like it's either they're not gonna get to me or I'm gonna be the last person to take the kick and win the game I wasn't I wasn't nervous in the moment I just knew when I let the shot fly that I was gonna make it <laughs> It was kind of crazy to see that student section of the soccer game. It was cool to have that environment. Um, how it affects the rivalry, I would say, um, just in general, Hanford Athletics is doing a lot of cool things, not just Hanford soccer, uh, sorry, not just Hanford boys soccer, but Hanford girls soccer, and a lot of our uh, athletic programs are doing a lot of cool things. So I think going forward, uh, if a lot of the middle schoolers could see that stuff and not always choose one school when it's time to decide for athletics, um, I think this night, that night, excuse me, showed that you could do cool things at both schools, not just one.